Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. Welcome to Master Dealmaker's Secrets. I'm John Blake. This is episode 90. Today, I'm going to be talking to Adam Rolls about modern marketing. And I'm really, really excited to have him on. He demystifies so much of what has become quite a complicated subject in today's podcast. So I think you're going to get a lot out of that. But before we get stuck into that, if you've got lead flow, if you've got people in your funnel that you've spoken to that have not converted yet, and you want to convert more of those leads into sales, head over to johnblakeaudio.com, grab your free audio training where I show you the exact word-for-word strategy that you can use to double the sales from the existing leads in your funnel. This is the exact same strategy that I start all of my high-ticket clients on. It works consistently once you've got it installed in your business. You can even teach it to somebody else in your organization um, to get the same result it's worth doing and it will keep producing results as long as you keep using it. So head over to johnblakeaudio.com You'll get the audio training and what you'll also get is a PDF with the exact word-for-word templates, the scripts to use when you call somebody, exactly what to write in your emails and exactly when to write your emails and when to call over a 90-day period. So head over to johnblakeaudio.com and grab that now and I look forward to hearing your success story. All right, so here's Adam. Okay, so today I have got Adam Rolls with me. Adam is the owner of Inbound Marketing. His marketing journey started at the age of 10, where he created his first website on Michael Jordan. This led to Adam creating a school website for him for students, um, which would suggest that he could pot- potentially in, an, in another lifetime have become Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Um, I guess that's possible. Uh, Adam's first commercial website came in 2007 that generated 20,000 visitors per day. Within six months, he was pocketing $300 per day from his website, Power of Leverage. Um, Adam decided to leave his job for an ASX listed company and go back to university to study management of information systems. He honed his craft, working for a number of marketing agencies in Perth until he noticed an issue. Most businesses did not have a marketing strategy. In most cases, they were shooting in the dark. I think a lot of businesses still are. Um, Adam went on to create inbound marketing game plan system that identifies specific activities to reach his client's goals. Next came the world-class marketing team who to this day have created the ultimate marketing machine. Adam has worked with industry-renowned publications, including Search Engine Journal, Dynamic Business, business business.com, and much more. Good morning or good afternoon, Adam. How are you, mate? Great to have yeah. you on. Thank you for having me, John. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Cool. So, um, so mate, you know, like we've known each other for a long time. Um, stoked to have you uh, to have you on the show. Um, what I thought I might start with is is you know we live in this world where there are so many you know it's it online marketing has become even more important because you know people are certainly over the last six months have been, you know, forced even more so inside. So the attention on, on digital channel channels is, is, um, you know, is at the highest, I think that it's ever been There's data that supports this somewhere. I, 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 um, I, I know that, you know, I think it's like 40 or 50% more people, uh, you know, are online as a result of what's happened over the last six months. Um, and, and now there's, there's, you know, so many channels, you know, so there's like LinkedIn and there's Facebook and there's TikTok and there's bloody Twitter and there's, um, you know, the Google AdWords network and so many different places where you can, you know, scream your message from the rooftops. But what should people have in place even before they start to try and work out where they're going to advertise their stuff? Yeah, it's one of the biggest issues we see people start advertising and, um, you know, expect to get results. And and generally that's not the case. You know, it's quite competitive online, but, 
You know, if I had to say the most important things to do before you start advertising or marketing your business online is you need to really start with strategy first. You need to understand, you know, what's worked in the past, um, what's your unique selling proposition, what's your messaging for your business. Um, and, and that's really critical because the next stage, which I'll explain a bit later, is, is, is about building the engine building yep. the the website so you need to make sure you get the messaging right um and then part of strategy it's really important that at that stage you, you know you dive in look at your competitors understand what they're doing reverse engineer that understand your target audience and um and then from all that information you put something solid together so you're not wasting your money um so that's probably the first thing that comes to mind mm-hmm. um and secondly i would say that you know where are you going to send traffic or people to? Mm. You know, that that's one thing people don't think about. They'll they'll just send it to their website, their home page, and most of the time websites aren't really configured in a way to convert visitors into leads or sales very mm. effectively. One of the stats that comes to mind is two point seven five percent. This is an average um, of. 2.75% of people convert from um, a visitor to a lead on your website. So, you know, over 97 people will land on your website and then bounce. So, then yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and for most cases, they'll, they won't come back. And, and like the behavior now, people open up, you know, five, 10 different tabs and they're bouncing all over the web. Um, so you need to make sure that uh, you put, what we call a lead funnel in place or Mm -hmm. uh, landing pages in place, or really just think about where you're going to send people to, um, to give you the best opportunity to turn that into a, into a lead. And, and probably thirdly, I'm thinking is having sort of a marketing automation or CRM set up. I know that you do that quite extensively yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'm always getting your emails um, all the time. So it keeps you top of mind. So that's something to consider for a lot of businesses um, to nurture people because not, not everyone's ready to buy right now. No. So um, you need to have them in place before you start sending traffic uh, to those assets or, or websites or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that the, yeah, the, the, that website stat's pretty bizarre. You know, 2.75 people will actually hang, hang around. The rest just bolt. <laughs> you know, I think attention, yeah. attention spans are getting lower and lower. Um, and and, and it's, I guess it's that triangle, isn't it? It's that sort of message market media, you know, like we're about to your people hanging out, um, what media are you going to use and what's the message that you're going to send them to, you know, to get their attention. Um, it, was, it was interesting. A, a, and, and don't quote me on these stats, but I believe it was Coke or one of these big brands about 20 years ago did a study on the attention span Um and it was about 20 seconds and gradually over the next 20 years, I think 10 years ago, it was sort of 13 seconds or 11 seconds or whatnot. And now it's somewhere around seven to eight seconds. Yeah. Uh, and I think a goldfish is around, I, don't, I can't remember, but someone said, you know, nine seconds or whatnot. So um, it could be seven seconds, but yeah, attention span, we're just constantly getting bombarded with different messages all the time. And, and yeah, so. I yeah, that was we're, cool. we're all these little dories swimming around. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I'll even walk into my uh, kid's bedroom and, and they'll have, you know, a laptop, a mobile phone yeah. and the TV going all at once Yeah. while they're studying and baffles me how they do it. But when it, my son does all right in study, but yeah. um, I couldn't do it. No way. That's it. That's the exact same thing with my daughter. So it's laptop, phone, and television on, and somehow is studying. Like, go figure. It's just, um, the, and that's another thing that's going to be really important in marketing. Uh, it's coming even more important is how do you grab that attention now? And, yeah. uh, you know, you need to make sure that your marketing is different. Yeah. And, and you got to be direct to the point nowadays. People people don't want to be sold to. Um mm. So yeah, it's it's a different approach um, to what we we have been doing over the last sort of ten years, but it's just getting a little bit more sort of difficult to get that attention. But um, 
for a marketing agency like myself, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good problem that people are having because I wouldn't have a job otherwise. Nah. Yeah. It's if, if it was easy, everyone would just be doing it themselves. And, and I think a lot of people do do it themselves and kind of stuff it up, but, um, but yeah, you're right. It's harder and harder to stand out, you know, to, to really get people's attention, especially when attention spans are, um, are so low. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask you is, so, you know, there's all these channels and none of them are getting any cheaper. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, Facebook's so much more expensive than what it used to be. Um, uh, you know, um, Google's a lot more expensive than what it used to be. All the other platforms are, are offering advertising and I don't think any of them are getting any cheaper. What is the most affordable? And, and I know it's different, you know, for different different businesses that have different markets and those those target markets hang out in different places. But what would you say is still the most affordable opportunity to market a business right now in, in terms of channels? Yeah, I think the most affordable at the moment is, or for me personally, is YouTube, mm. uh, purely because I don't think many people have, you know, uh, entered, entered YouTube from an advertising point of view. Yep. Um, especially, um, you know, most businesses, you know, haven't done that transition over. And we've been moving a lot of um, our clients over to YouTube from TV and it's working really effective. Um, wow. The costs are quite low. Wow. So it's, it's interesting. Compared, compared, compared to TV, it is. <laughs> oh, definitely. And you know what the great beauty about YouTube is, is you only pay when you get to the 30-second mark they've watched. Yeah, right. Awesome. So they've obviously, they've got the chance to skip in the first five seconds. Yeah. Uh, but only until they watch uh, after after 30 seconds, you'll be charged. So, and so you can, and the targeting is just so powerful. So you can target people who have are in market. So when I say in market is someone who's shown behavior outside of YouTube. So they've mm -hmm. been on other, cause everyone's got a, the Google pixel or, or, or you know, or cookie on their mm -hmm. website. So, yeah. so Google knows what people are researching and doing. So you can target people who are in market for your service or product mm -hmm. and narrow all the way down to, you know, a couple of kilometer radius. And we find this really effective, but, Probably the other thing I want people to understand as well is it's not the channel in a lot of cases, mm. it's the offer and messaging that's more critical and important. So if you yeah. get that right, then your costs will come down considerably. Yeah. And so all these channels have got some sort of quality score or quality system uh, built into it yep. so if you your ad gets better engagement than your competitors they'll reward you with cheaper impressions cheaper clicks and which will result in you know cheaper uh, costs for leads and sales yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but going back to humans being goldfish <laughs> it's, it's even more important now to have a multi-channel approach yeah so to you know, be in multiple channels at once. So for my clients, we're probably most, everyone's pretty much in Google because yep. it's got a real, it's got a commercial intent when people use Google and type in, in the search uh, box. Um, we have really good conversion rates and close rates, mm -hmm. but then you want to make sure you have remarketing and retargeting. So ads that follow people around on the web, on Google, on Facebook, on mm -hmm. YouTube, on LinkedIn. And it's, 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 stat is, um, it, it was seven touch points before someone was ready to be comfortable to buy from someone. I think that's changed now and it's, you know, 12 plus. And I think I've, I've actually enrolled in, in your training as well. And you always talk about how important it is to keep following up and touching base with people. Yeah. Same thing applies from a digital marketing point of view. You need more touch points. So one channel is probably just not going to do it anymore. No. Um, and I think the analogy is, is is the more places someone will see you, they'll just perceive that you're either a market leader or the best at what you do. Yeah. Um, and, and that might that might take them to, to see your ad seven times before they yeah. actually take any action. Yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting when, 
you know, when you run across somebody who, who you know, you've got a bit of an inside kind of understanding of who they are and, and, you, and you look at what they're doing from a marketing standpoint and you're just like, wow, like, you know, the, the, the positioning that, that this person's got is brilliant. Um, but you actually, you know, you have like an inside line on, on, on what they do. And you're like, <laughs> so this, this is this one guy that comes to mind and he markets a book and um, it's not even his book. <laughs> <laughs> sells this book, right? He's just forever, you know, you see him everywhere. He's just spruiking this book. And I, and I checked him out online. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> He's, he's selling this book. Like, you know, if he's spending all this money on advertising, maybe you should write his own book. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those ones that just makes you scratch your head. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that hard to write a book. Like, if you're that good at it. Well, you, so, you've, you've wrote a book. I'm, for, um, I'm, I'm scared of going down that path yet, writing a book. It, it sounds like a difficult task and time consuming, but yeah, I know that you you have a process and system to that. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, you know, it's, I've got another one that I'm kind of brewing, you know, in the, in the background as well, somewhere um, for a while, for a long time there, I was like, oh, I don't think I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that there's another case to write a book. And then, and then the other day I started thinking, oh, I reckon there is. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I got a lot more is you, is you forget what you know, you know what I mean? Like you, it becomes so, um, becomes so normal. Um, it's only, once you actually hear, you know, it's only once you sort of catch yourself talking about things, it's like, wow, you know, I do talk about that a bit. Maybe I should talk more about that. You know what I mean? I think, you know, and, and sort of on a side note here is books and eBooks are just very powerful tools in terms of marketing and yeah. advertising. And uh, we get, I think I looked at some stats just recently. We had over 2000 leads just from an eBook in, wow. in a few months. And uh, this, they uh, each sale is around two hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! So, uh, they're making some good money. That's brilliant. That is so good. What what um what industry? Just out of interest. Uh, they're they're a builder, and this this data that I was looking at was prior to the grants that have recently been offered out by the Australian government. Um, mm -hmm. Which has made that industry explode. Yeah, yeah, uh, building, but, yeah, it's gone mental. Yeah, so I think the difference is when you write a, when you write a book, you need to make sure that it's different than your competitors, and you really put in some time in terms of making sure it stands out and and, and is different. Um, yeah, just doing a five page book is probably just not going to cut it nowadays. No, no, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what, one of the things that I've helped a whole bunch of people to do is to, you know, create like an education-based marketing um, piece of content. Um, and you're right, like the, the leads that you get from them are incredible. In fact, yeah, I think, I think I've seen a few of yours actually. They're, they're really good, um, the approach you take. It's, it's a bit more educational. Yeah. Yeah, I just did one for... Uh, um, I just did one for a carpenter and um, we, we, uh, we mapped out the 11, like a 11 point checklist that a builder should go through um, with a, with a potential subcontractor before they make a decision to hire them. Cause this guy was saying that, you know, you just see so many subcontractors on building sites that are just, you know, like they just shouldn't be there. And, and so he wants to get more work with builders. So he's created this, um, you know, we've created this report that he can send to a potential builder that's got this 11 point checklist that they can go through with specific questions that they should be asking um, subcontractors. Because for a builder, if you've, if you've got, you know, one trade um, that lets the side down, you know, that can create, create all sorts of dramas, you know, with the client and with, you know, the other trades and cost blowouts and time delays and, you know, it can, it can be a disaster. So. Well, checklist, um, checklists, are, are another thing that's really powerful. People want information quickly and checklists cuts to the point and, and they have really, really good conversion rates. You put that on an ad and you'll crush it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
so yeah, that's mate, that's awesome. So yeah, um, you know, YouTube, but yeah, it needs to be multi-channeled. Um, you know, remarketing, and um, and yeah, certainly, you know, if you can create some education-based marketing around books, um, it doesn't surprise mm. me that you've had a client that's got two hundred leads, two thousand leads from an ebook. That's brilliant. Well, the reason why these educational info packs that you create and, and ebooks and whatnot they work so well is they're talking people at the sort of the sort of research stage, which accounts for majority of people online right now. So, not everyone just wants to buy or ready to talk to someone, uh, but most people are open to you know absorbing information about how they can do things better. Um, so that's why those sort of resources work so well. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember listening to um, you know Dan Kennedy years ago where he talks about the passing parade of interest and that at each stage of the process um, a buyer will have different questions so they'll have questions when they're researching they'll have questions when they're trying to select someone they'll have questions just before you know they're about to make a decision as to who they're going to choose um, then they'll probably have questions once they're once they're already a client and so it's like, you know, what, at what stage do you want to meet them along the road? Um, and I've, I've used that heaps and it's, it's super powerful. You know, if you can sort of get into the mind of the, of the buyer and go, okay, well, they're in their research stage. You know, what are the questions that they're going to have right now? You know, it's pretty cool. It is. And you know what uh, I find quite powerful at the moment with um, CRMs and marketing automation systems is that you can segment your list based on different stages of the buying journey. Yeah. And then you can connect that data to Facebook or Google. So they'll only see messaging and ads at certain stages. For instance, I'll give you an, a, a real simple example. You know, when people are in the sort of early stages and, and they might be just interested in reading a blog article. And so you might put a blog article up, but once they become a visitor on your website, that's when you might want to promote your information pack because, you know, they've been on your website, you know, they're somewhat interested because they read that blog article. Now I'm going to show them my info pack. Once they've downloaded the info pack, they then you show them an ad about, you know, maybe testimonial ads um, that takes them further down that track to sort of book an appointment or, or purchasing from you to build in that trust. So you can just segment the, all those stages up. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's so, so powerful. Yeah, it's awesome. Really good. I mean, if you, you can just show somebody a message that relates to the stage that they are at in their buying process, then that's, you know, that's, that's super powerful. Awesome. Um, cool. So, so, you know, with, with all of this in mind, you know, what, what, you know, when you start working with, with someone and, and, and I guess you've got a couple of different scenarios, you could have someone who's trying to do it themselves you could have a scenario where they're already working with another agency or you could have a scenario where um, they're not doing anything um, and, and they need to start from scratch. But, but you know, what would you say are, are some of the mistakes that, that people make? If, you, know, that, you know, what do you see when, when you first start working with somebody that's perhaps trying to, being, you know, trying to do it themselves with an in-house marketing person or they're working with an existing agency. You know, what, what are the most common sort of things that you see that people need to, to address first, you know, before they can really start to get some traction? Well, normally when we, we get a client that comes on board, the first thing that we look at is the targeting because uh, normally the targeting is way too broad yep. um, and they're wasting so much money on, on irrelevant clicks and, and keywords and, and uh, audiences. So that's probably the first thing we look at really laser focused uh, targeting um, with a caveat at the moment, a lot of these platforms are trying to take that away um, from the marketer. So like, for instance, Facebook is trying to, you know, say, don't, don't give us your options, your targeting options. We'll try to figure it, figure it out for you. And they do an okay job. But generally speaking, we find that people are wasting a lot of money um, with the wrong targeting. And secondly, we normally find that going back to the conversion rate, they're sending traffic to, and again, really, really low conversion rates. So visitor to lead is, is extremely low. Mm. Um, so that's generally um, the second place that we, we, we fix up. And then it's the messaging. It's just, you know, it's the same old across, across the board. So 
we're really trying to get people to um, video is a massive thing at the moment. We're trying to introduce to a lot of businesses because I can just tell such a, such a, such a good story about their business and, and, and the target audience can really resonate with them. So that's probably the next thing that we, we look at to make them stand out from a crowded marketplace. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, that, yeah, that makes total sense. You know, targeting the wrong people, sending traffic to places that aren't going to actually capture those, um, those people's interest and having messaging that doesn't work um, in, in terms of what they're trying to get the, you know, the, the next, the, the, the person to do next in their, in their process. That makes total sense. And that's a lot of that is more of the technical side, but from a creative point of view is just imagine someone scrolling through LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, you need to have something that ads that just really pop out and resonate. So mm. we've been, we've been really exploring things that are going to like grab someone's attention. So using real bright colors in your images, or if you're going to have a video ad, just make sure there's movement going on. So people stop the scroll. That's, that's, that's the main thing. You want to stop people from just scrolling, scrolling. And then, so once they stop, then you got a five seconds to engage them, you know, tell them who it's for, what, you know, lead with probably what their problem is and how you're going to solve it and just try to get them engaged. Yeah. So, yeah. It's getting complex. There's yeah. so much to do. The five second rule. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's it really is quite. I think it can be quite overwhelming at times. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you know, what do you do first? And there's a million people trying to tell you to, that you need to do a million things. You know, someone who's people who specialize in LinkedIn and specialize in Facebook and specialize in Facebook groups and specialize in bloody TikTok and and you know, I think a lot of people just get to a point where they just go. Oh, I'm just not going to do anything. <laughs> Look, uh, in the first thing that anyone needs to sort out is, is you know, I've, I've gone through it before, but probably getting their website right. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing. Just start there and then pick one channel Yeah. and then go in there. And, and that channel, you, could, you pick that channel based on your target customer where yeah. they most likely will be hanging out where the intent is the highest to purchase your product or yep. um, so that that's, and then just work from there. Um, that's why people use agencies because there's just too much to do too many channels. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really good advice. You know, get your website, right. Then pick, pick a channel where you can be confident that your people are going to be hanging out in. I think that's, that's normally, normally does it. If you, and you yeah. get, get those two things right. And then, just reinvest into the other channels um, yeah. as you see fit. So, um, so mate, tell me about the uh, lead ROI system that you've that you've developed. Um, you know, it sounds. Um, you know, I saw that on your LinkedIn thing actually, and I was like, "Ooh, that sounds pretty cool." Um, tell me what. Tell me what's going on there. Yeah. So originally, I just started creating this sort of um, system internally for our business to mm -hmm. sort of make sure people were following the right processes. And then eventually it's turned out to be something that, um, every time I speak to a client, um, they get really excited. So essentially what we, we found that a lot of businesses were just shooting in the dark, just going and just doing the wrong thing. So the idea was, is we created a five step, uh, process, um, that walks a client from, you know, um, step one all the way through to step five to generate more leads. And so essentially if you go, it's on my new website, it's called growmyleads.com.au. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it starts off with step one, you know, building a custom blueprint, which is a strategy. Mm -hmm. And so you can watch the video there. It goes through what's involved in that process. And then step two is about, you know, developing the 10 X lead funnel, which is mm -hmm. the reason why we called it the 10 X lead funnels because it generates 10 times the amount of leads as an ordinary website. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, 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 and, and I've essentially three different pages that we have created for our clients over time. That's just yielded really um, high conversion rates. So mm -hmm. one being a sales page, which is very focused on building trust and authority um, and with, with the, uh, visitor and then drive them to the next stage of the sales process, either being getting quote or book an appointment or, or purchasing. Uh, the other 
uh, page, a lead funnel is a lead magnet, which could be like an information pack, could be a guide, could be a white paper. And then the third um, landing page or lead, lead funnel is, is a video webinar style uh, landing page. So that's the step two which also includes the marketing automation process as well by, you know, hooking up to either, you know, HubSpot or Salesforce or Active Campaign, And then step three is the advanced targeting. So um, that's all about picking the right channels uh, to market. Mm -hmm. And then step four is the smart retargeting, which is, you know, once people have bounced from your website and haven't inquired, you want to, you know, market back to them. And so, and, and lastly, step five, which is optimize ROI. So it's all about generating a return on investment, you know, measuring the most critical metrics that are gonna, that are gonna generate profit for your business. And um, yeah, I, I put this system together and, and made it really simple so people understand. Um, we use it internally. And yeah, it's just, um, I, just think, I think you just need to simplify things sometimes. And, yeah. map, and we, we map it out for our clients in a visual format. Yeah, because it, it would appear to be like a kind of a, a um, concentric thing, you know, like where, you know, when, when you get to the end, you'll be, you know, you optimize, you know, you, you've gone through that and create all those things, and then you go back and optimize them based on the, um, on the flow of traffic and the conversions and all the rest of it. Yeah, and, and we're, we're looking at the 80 20 rule here. Yeah. So focusing on the things that are going to generate the best results um, for your business. You know, yeah. there's just so much clutter out there. Awesome. Um, and, and, and so I always need to clarify with, with the people that I listen to, because I talk about conversions a lot, conversion rates. So, so when you say conversion rates, it's different from when I say conversion rates in, yes. terms, of what, in terms of what it means. So, so for you, a conversion is someone putting their email address and their first name, potentially their telephone number into a web form. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. 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 For me, it's when someone actually buys something. <laughs> See, I, I call that, I call that close rate. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's important. It's because you know, it's like you, that's your world and you know, and, um, and, uh, and so it's important to make that distinction. Um, because you know, it's an important part of the process because <laughs> if they don't put in their first name and their email address, then you, you don't get an opportunity to sell them. So, um, so that's, that, that's an important distinction. So mate, um, this has been super useful because you know, it, I, I just think this thing, you know, this, this area can be so confusing and I, I think you've really, um, you know, simplified it, um, for people that'll be listening, but mate, if, um, people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Yeah, they can either uh, contact me through growmyleads.com.au, uh, yep. go on there, um, watch the video. There'll be um, an opportunity to book a strategy session with me or you can go to inboundmarketing.com.au and um, yeah, just have a look around and click a couple of buttons and I'm sure I'll have lots of call to actions on the website so you can contact me. Yeah, it's good, mate. You got to practice what you preach, right? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Awesome. Well, mate, thanks so much for coming on board. It's been awesome catching up with you and um, great chatting. And I think it's going to be super valuable for everyone who's listening. So, um, mate, um, thanks again. Thanks, John. No, I appreciate it. Cheers, mate. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker's Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies to maximize your sales process with new episodes every week and double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive free no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.